us. We have some. Uh, Hello? Technical. Are we good? Yes, we are. Are you blowing at it? Okay, I am going to call our regular Board of Education meeting to order. Uh, if we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, first, before we get started, I just would like to welcome our two new board members, Sue Boyd and Jessica Sexton down there. Welcome, ladies. Good to have you on board. Yay! Yay. We, we are complete. Um, and Kyle, um, we just would like you to know that we are very happy that you are our lone surviving male. Um, <laughs> only the strong survived. Kyle, yes, that's you. <laughs> He's good. Yep, I just wanted to fit in. That's so neat. So, power to the women. Okay, now our mission statement. Tracy. Everton Community Schools can provide a quality education that empowers students to be successful in a global community. Sarah. Here. Kyle. Here. Chris. Here. Sue. Here. Jessica. Here. I am here. Margaret. Here. We are all here. Fabulous. Next, uh, looking for a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. So moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, motion to approve the consent agenda. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the consent agenda as presented in the attached application. Supported. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion, Brian? Uh, just like to recognize, we had four retirements or excuse me, resignations for the last month. Uh, Rebecca Weather. Weber, she was, she was a teacher at the International Academy of Cone. Uh, she resigned. Uh, that position is posted. If it's a Richmond teacher that gets the position, we will continue to have a teacher at the IAM. But if it's another district that has the teacher, then we would no longer have an IAM teacher. Um, if it's someone from the outside, they may approach Richmond about hiring them through as part of the consortium. Uh, Amy St. John, secretary at the high school. Uh, Lisa Matway, a uh, speech and language teacher, primarily at the elementary school. And Michelle Newsom, payroll and employee benefits coordinator. All of these individuals have devoted many years uh, to Richmond Community Schools um, and time, and so they will be greatly missed. And then I have not had any questions regarding the June and July claims and accounts. Okay, it has been moved and supported. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, moving on to our presentation, the odd. Um, I asked to put this on the agenda because we have a couple um, board members and to see where um, if the board wants me to continue pursuing this direction or if we want to go into a different direction. Um, in your packet, you will have, uh, you have actually a couple documents. Uh, the first document is the inspection report. It was done in May of 2000, I believe 16, or excuse me, no, May of 17. Um, it gives you a, a kind of a, a summary of the condition of the uh, Roosevelt Civic Auditorium, also known as the Odd. Um, if you're board members, the other five board members, you might remember we did a tour of the Odd to give you a perspective of it. Um, following this, um, the direction of the board was to get an appraisal of the building. Um, so you'll see also an appraisal done by Midwest uh, Value Midwest. Um, in that document, you'll see on the third or the second page in, in the cover letter, you'll see the appraisal value. Um, that appraisal value is not only for the odd, but also the bus garage, which is located, the old bus garage, which is located next to the odd. So if you look at the, um, one of the this document is also in your board packet. Uh, this is 32 mile road that runs here. Main Street M19 runs along here. So you have the old bus garage and the little building next to it. And then you have the odd. Um, we these are two parcels. This is one parcel, the odd, and then this is the second parcel, which is kind of like a, a L shape. And on this parcel, there's an easement that allows for access to the odd. 
Um, we had at one point put up the property for the old bus garage for sale. We had a bidder, a couple bidders. Um, we worked through with the highest bidder, um, but because of the easement um, and, and not being able to release that easement, uh, it limited what that purchaser could do with the property. Um, so we have agreed that they have the right of first refusal. So basically, if the property goes back for sale, um, we would approach them to see if they would like that property and so forth. Um, the odd property is here. And if you recall, we used to have an agreement that began in 2009 and ended in January of this past uh, year, 18, with the uh, Regional Youth Initiative. Um, so since then, the odd has been sit, has sat vacant. Not, not being utilized. Um, we have been approached by um, uh, two groups. Um, one, um, first of all, let me back up. Um, I had approached the city of Richmond, the township of Casco, and the township of Richmond, as well as the township of Columbus and um, Lenox, uh, to see if they would like to look at a consortium. Um, though conceptually, they were favorable to the idea. None of them had any of the dollars to be able to put the, to invest in the building uh, for its, the maintenance that's in that report, as well as the long-term upkeep. Um, that was my first step. And then we met, I believe, um, Margaret and Sarah met with the, um, the Richmond wrestlers and um, Brandon Day and uh, Mr. Boyd um, and John Coker. Cheerleading. Um, Kelly Mathis. Kelly Mathis was there and they talked about a consortium between baseball, cheerleading, and wrestling to run some youth clinics out of there. Um, to date, I have not received anything other than the flyer that the board received several months ago from Concepcion on their idea. Uh, last, uh, I believe Thursday, um, I took uh, Scott Evans and, forgive me, I'm drawing a blank on the other gentleman as part of the, their 501c3 organization to it to see if that could be utilized for the baseball. Um, he was going to be talking to his group as well as the wrestlers. So to date, we haven't gotten anything more in a proposal from that group. Also on Thursday, I took a, an outside agency which currently leases our uh, auditorium every Sunday. Um, and you, I put in front of you an email that I received today. Um, they are proposing um, to um, lease the building. Uh, similar to the terms and condition. Now, this has not been looked at by our attorney. This is literally so this is their, their, pro their proposal that they want. Um, it's similar to the proposal of the, the Richmond, um, uh, excuse me, the Re uh, Regional Youth Initiative. Uh, you'll see the, in the third paragraph, it talks about the lease payment, uh, which is similar to what the board had agreed upon with them. The difference in this one, and I believe it's on the second page in terms of utilities, maintenance, uh, remodels, they would assume all costs. Um, the building to date, um, the district has invested money in keeping it to be a uh, usable building. Uh, we replaced the siding on the side closest to ball equipment. Uh, we currently have a leak in the basement. Um, when we had that heavy rain about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, um, there's been some flooding in the basement that's got to be fixed. Um, some of the tiles are starting to pop in the basement. Um, there's been a long-standing leak in the basement on the foundation by the um, boiler. So the, there's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done to this building. Um, so this is where what we have done. Um, you know, what my concern is the more that building sits dormant, especially if there's a water leak, we have the potential of mold growing in that building, which there currently that I'm aware of none. Um, there's a small leak in the, the roof that's by the, on the gym floor side. Uh, I've been watching that because I wasn't sure if it was a one time when we had that heavy rain, it was basically coming in horizontally at, at the building. Um, I have not noticed any new leaks on that one, so I don't know again if it's a unique situation, but um, I guess what I'm looking for is, is where does the board want to go? You have an assessed value of the building. Uh, we have probably spent uh, general fund, when you look at the repairs there, we had to fix some toilets, the appraisal amount, the bill is in your packet. We probably have spent close to about $10,000 on that building to date, um, yet alone the utilities that are um, 
still there, though they are significantly reduced because we're not heating it to the level we were. We're not using the lighting to the level that we were. Um, but we are, there's still a continuing cost for this building. Um, the bus garage next door to the building, <coughs> everything except electricity has been turned off. That was the, uh, um, recently, a couple months ago, it was built of some vandalism, a break-in that happened there. So we had some out-of-pocket costs that we had to, you know, our, our uh, deductible um, that was made, um, you know, upon restitution to the insurance company, we would get our deductible back. But a lot of hours that are spent in that building and facility too, um, just keeping it secure. So the question I'm proposing to the board is do you want me to continue pursuing a lease agreement or do you want to look at pursuing the, um, putting the facility, the two buildings up for sale? I don't know if you want to answer that today, if you want to think about it, if you want to come back and have more discussion on it. Um, you know, if you're leasing the building, one of the things that I'm, my concern is the added cost that would be for the district for custodial services if we have to clean it, depending on the group that's in there. Um, repairs of the building, the roof is estimated at about $60,000 cost to repair the roof of the building. Um, it's not energy efficient. I mean, the doors have, there's a broken door on the front um, that, that is locked and secure, but um, there's cement work that needs to be on the back parking lot. Um, really needs to be redone or turned into gravel. It's, it's, there's some, a lot of maintenance there. Wasn't there a boiler issue? Uh, the boiler we did get, we did, the boiler is fixed, it's been inspected and up to date. Um, it is right now in the um, off mode or unoccupied mode, but it will have to pay someone to come in and turn the boiler on, check the chemicals. Um, there's also on this particular boiler is designed that every day someone um, used to have a boiler person in the schools, right. a boiler maintenance person that would actually drain this boiler is designed to be drained daily when it's being used. So. Between myself and Mr. Burkmeyer, last winter we were the ones that went over there um, using in the morning, check the building, and drain the boiler, and then turn it back on. We want you definitely have to keep it at a certain temperature so that it doesn't damage the gym floor and the other aspects of the building. Okay. Go ahead. So, um, did, did you get the sense that? That the, the wrestling, cheer, baseball, that 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 they had walked away, or that they just have not have not moved further. I didn't. Right? I did not get the sense that they walked away. What I got the sense was, and I gave them each a copy of the assessment of the building, so they all had a copy of what repairs were either priority or, or potentially could be. I think the challenge that they're going to have is maintaining, being able to come up with the funds to fix the building. You know, they talked about, you know, this is a very giving community. Maybe some of the labor costs could be reduced with some of the organizations, com com companies donating the time and just paying for the materials. Um, I think they all saw a lot of potential in the building in terms of what they could do for youth programming. Um, it would add another gym space, um, which is desperately needed. Um, I did contact French's and Associates to see what would it cost to um, just add a gym to the high school. Just a gym, nothing spectacular, no bleacher, and so forth. Uh, and they estimate that to be 1.5 to $2 million. Uh, so the value of that property wouldn't even come close to being able to add on to a, a gym, which would, which is the need that we have in this district space. <clears throat> and Tracy, I think when we met with them that day, and say if you think different, but I left that meeting with the idea that um, here was here was everything we were coming from, what we thought we needed, and I I thought they were coming back to us in June, right? Didn't didn't we talk about if if you wanted to put something together, come back in June or possibly in August? Because I just think it's more more involved than, than what that group. I think it's a really great idea, and there's lots of stuff going on, but I don't know that there was a set plan put together by them, and that's what I thought that they were gonna come back and they, give to us. Yeah, they still had a few people that needed to tour it, like Scott Evans, so if that just happened. That just happened last week. At that point, when we met, when did we meet? May. May. That was, I thought the next step was that they were gonna get in, so if that just happened, I see where they're gonna be. 
So I'm guessing they're going to get their heads together now that they've all seen it and see if it's something they can come up with. I mean, I think it might be nice just to reach out to them to see if there's more there. I mean, that decision. That that's what I think. You have to reach out as you know Especially this email. I would like a little time. Right. I mean, this email is very interesting. Right. right. Very interesting. Right. Sure. Um, and you know, I think I'd like to for a lawyer to look at the lease, all that sure. stuff. But I would like that group to also still have the chance because this, this from this email, this is a bona fide sure. interested, you know, yeah. here it is put out there. Yeah. And I'd like to sure. see that group put something because what we said to them was, you're going to have to come to the board and present. You're going to have to lay it all out to us on what's going to happen, what's, who's going to pay for what, all of that. Because as a board, that's that's the only way we're going to be able to say sure. this is the group that you know will do it. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Okay. I, I had a question about um, designating the building as like a historical site, and if you do that, then I believe there is grants available to help support the repair of the building. Um, I guess what I would like to know is is that available on this building and should we get that designation before we sign this lease because they're going to need to honor whatever the stipulation is of the historical building before they do any of the maintenance because it is I mean, it is a historical building so it already has that designation? No. Oh, I'm just saying. saying. Mm -hmm. I think oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. To be there to get that designation, knowing how it was built, knowing who built it, I mean, those kinds of things. I mean, I think that that's potential. And, and I don't think just local dollars. I think there might be other avenues of income mm -hmm. to, to pay for some of this stuff once the designation is there. Well, and doesn't the historical society don't, I mean, the, the thing that they just built, that barn that they just built over there. I mean, I think, don't they do a lot of things through grants and that kind of stuff? Maybe it's something that they can help us with, potentially? If the, the only concern I have is the manpower in the district level to do that. Who is that person? To, to, to do, do what? Coordinate with the groups, the, the renovations, the writing, the grants. Who is that person in the district? Well, I think first and foremost, let's even find out if it can qualify. Yeah. Well, and I think what that entails, because I thought if something was deemed like historical, you had to do renovations up to a specific yeah. caliber family to kind of preserve it. You can't just renovate it, but it has to be preserving something, right? Like there's rules around it. So I've just kind of, before we jump for it, maybe we should know what that all entails. Well, the, the, the assessment of the property that, that are articulated, this property is very limited in what it can be used for. Sure. Yeah. And one of the things that was a church. Well, and I mean, I get where you're coming from because does that turn into that it's the superintendent's job to be doing all of that? And I don't know necessarily that that's, I think, what anybody here is, you know, thinking, but it, it could be. A joint thing through the historical society, even maybe I, I don't know. And or if you know, if three organizations want to chip in people on that too. True. Yeah, if there's a right. group that 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 wants to use the building, and if they want to work through that, yeah, that's true. I mean, just I mean, Brian, are you saying that it, that feels like just pursuing? that historical site is something that, I mean. I guess where I've come from is if, if the board's direction is you don't want to lose the building, if that's the, the tenor of the direction, then we need to figure out an option of how we can raise funds or, or get, receive funds to keep the building, because it needs major work. Um, there's nothing in it. You, I mean, the basketball nets are gone, the sound system's gone, everything so um, to use it for anything other than putting some rustling mats in there or I mean I think a batting cage is about five thousand dollars they were estimating for one that lowers um, and putting it you're, you're now limiting limiting what it can be used for there's no chairs there so if there's a performance on there you have to you have a cost of bringing chairs over and, and, and so forth so I guess that's the question is is the ultimate goal 
we want this building because from an educational perspective, I don't see us ever using it from an educational perspective. Housing students in there for a learning environment, um, we, there's so much we have to bring up to code. Well, and I, I've said all along, I don't know that I'm someone, and I know there's others that feel different, I don't know that I'm someone that needs to keep that building. But I've always said if there was somebody that was interested in doing something, this email or that group that we met with that want to use it and do whatever, I'm interested in that. Otherwise, I just don't think we can afford to just keep having a building that <coughs> is empty and going into and dwindling. Right. Failing. Right. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think the, the whole historic kind of avenue is to consider is there money out there to help refurbish it to a point where it could be rented, where it could get, if that, would there be funds available, I think was was the direction to head, to be curious about whether that was true or not, I guess. It was a money, it was a money thing. <laughs> yeah. Right, you know, I mean, just considering, it, is that possible? Um, it feels like, to me anyway, that we need to get to a place where there's like some sort of a deadline that says if you're interested in doing anything with this building, you need to get your information to us by this date. <laughs> and then we can take a look at whatever is there, and then we can make a decision I, from that. I agree, and I, I really thought when we had that meeting, I really thought something was gonna come together, come together over the summer, and whether, because we talked about, you know, we just had one meeting we have one meeting in June, really, where we do it, but then it would be August. So I agree, and and it, and the reality is we've been talking about this for over it's a year. There's been a lot of yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we toured so it. It's January, right? So, so why don't we say October first? Well, it seems like that. I mean, because just because then if we if we see different ideas, and we're still not okay, then you put it put it up for sale. Or what, I mean, we're looking at a winter that potentially is going to be Correct. expensive um, for us to 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 keep heat in that building um, at all. So, I mean, it just feels like we just need to have that set in place. So we have everything we need to look at to make decisions and go boom, that's it. Because the reality is, here's a real viable. Oh, okay, totally. Right here. Right, right, right. Just the, oh, yeah. the effect of Brian talking to our attorney and looking at that, this is, yeah, this is very viable. And going through, yeah, the process of saying, is this, is this it? This agreement on my first blush is no different than what we had with the regional youth. There's nothing stopping this group from getting in there and the repair becoming too expensive and not being able to fix it and not using it. Now we're back to square one. Sure. Um, there's nothing stopping them because as long as we hold the property, the, the utilities are ours. So we have to pay the utilities and get reimbursements for them in that process. Um, and they stop paying the utilities. And not see the order breach of contract and end the contract that way, but we're still. It still takes months to do that. It took us. It took us a long time. Four months, somewhere else. Right. 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 But I still think it's helpful to have all the proposals to look at together. Yes. Because at that point, if we say no, um, if we need none of the proposals look like you, then we can put it up for sale. Put it up for sale. <laughs> right. That's a, that's an option is to put it up for sale since we have an appraisal. You know, so we can look at all of that, I guess. And, and if our attorney wants, you know, we, that last situation didn't go well. So if we want to put something in there that right. is a little different, they're either going to want to do it or they're not. Right. But I, I think. <laughs> Those October first work. I mean, otherwise we're we're pushing. We're gonna be pushing two years that we've been. Mm -hmm. I can reach out to the, uh, the the group, the athletic group, and see getting something back October first. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good. I think so. Please move Is there like a deposit, or I mean, forgive me, I haven't had time to read this. Um, yeah, I, I literally just set that in front of everybody today. Yeah, so I just, we just got it at the table. Okay. Just so you know. Um, um, that could be something we could put into it. This is their version of what they sent me this morning. Okay. Because I was just thinking to, you know, not knowing what happened the last time and how long it took, 
maybe an average of the utilities for how long it takes to move them is the deposit. I, I don't know. It's an idea, sorry. Sure. So I'll reach out to them so we have something by October 1st. So the okay. first meeting in October would be a presentation uh, if, they, if they're interested. Um, otherwise, at that meeting, then we have this group's presentation as well as the athletics. And at that time, the board. And then any historical. Any historical. So I'll have to reach out to the historical society. Anything, anything we can find out about that. And then we just, and then. We would decide from there whether we want to do something with one of those groups or do we want to put it for sale. Okay. I will reach out to you. Okay. Good. Okay, moving on. Next is our public comment. It's the portion of our meeting. If anyone would like to address the board, they can do so. You can come on up here to the podium. Um, you have three minutes to speak. It's not a question and answer period, but if you do have a question you need answered, is there a card up there? You can put your name and telephone number and someone will get back with you. opportunity to present my concerns to this honorable board. As a parent with two children attending Richmond Community Schools, I would like to know how to opt out of the district's laptop program for the upcoming school year. I would like to provide my children with their own devices rather than utilize the district provided computers. I just need to know what type of laptop to purchase, what operating system, applications, virus protection, and firewall protocols that will be required. I would also like to confirm that access will be provided for any online textbooks, assignments, presentations, and all, with the exception of personal teacher lesson plans, which is their own personal work product uh, for the next school year. The reason I'm requesting an opt-out is because for the last two years, I have been notified that there was damage occurred on the devices being turned in at the end of the school years. The funny part is that in the 2016-17 school year, we turned in a perfectly fine laptop. The, not the notification we received shows some damage to the unit. In discussion with other parents, they too received the notification of damage with the exact same picture. Sound fishy? No, let me continue. So last year, we opted not to take the laptops home, but to check one out of the media center in the morning and return it at the end of the school day. On the last day computers were to be used, my middle school child received a laptop with damage to it. He asked the media person to please document that he received a damaged unit. The person refused and assured him that he would not be responsible for the damage. Guess what happened? When he returned the laptop, he was told he would be responsible for the damage since he was returning a damaged laptop. Even though he wanted it documented at the start of the day that it was damaged. Why was he not allowed to document with the media center that he received a damaged laptop at the beginning of the day? That's incident number two. Incident number three was also from last year. My elementary school child took pictures of his laptop before turning it in. I have the photos. He took great shots of the outside from many angles and also the inside with the screen up. No damage. Imagine my surprise when I received a notification that his return laptop is damaged. One time is an incident, two times is a coincidence, three times is a trend. I don't know what kind of scheme your IT department is running, but I will not be playing this game any longer. I would either like a personal contact or correspondence by either postal mail or on the district website regarding the ability to opt out of the district's laptop program and also the requirements for personal devices to be fully acceptable and usable in the Richmond Community Schools in time for Blue Devil Days. Um, if the curriculum is delivered by technology, all students should have access or incur possible OCR violations and I would consider nothing less from a school district that guarantees learning for all of its students. Thank you. Thank you. Since there's no one else in the audience, I would assume we have no more public comment. And I will move on to superintendent and legislative update. 
Um, there is no legislative update as they have been um, off for the summer as well as campaigning for the upcoming election in November. Um, as far as the school, uh, today was the first day for the principals and secretaries back in the building. So I want to welcome them, officially welcome them back. Uh, they hit the ground running today and just opening the offices and getting things sorted. So um, we, we look forward to having a, uh, another great school year. Um, the upcoming, because at the next board meeting will be the high school Blue Devil Days, which is Monday, August 27th um, from 5 to 8. Tuesday would be the middle school Blue Devil Days, August 28th, uh, again 5 to 8, and then elementary would be on August 29th, which is Wednesday from 5 to 8. Um, so the notices regarding uh, welcome back letters and elementary assignments, etc., will be giving out next week. They'll be mailed sometime next week um, as we are finalizing new registrations, getting those students into our system, um, as well as um, exiting the leaders from the district. So. With that, um, we still have a couple opening positions. We have an English position at the middle school um, in general, and we also now have the, the latest ones from the consent agenda under the personnel that we'll be filling as quickly as possible. That's it. Okay. Next, I know of interest from members of the board. Does anybody have anything? I just had that the good old days parade is coming. That's funny. Sue and Jessica, we walk in the good old days parade, and. I know that you'll love to walk with us. Um, I sent the form in, you know, to make us an official uh, participant. So um, we'll be ready and have fun doing that. And we'll have more information um, at our next meeting. But mark it on your calendar. Good old day, Sunday. Do we wearing the same shirts? Yeah, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to come up with. Are you sure that we're the same shirts? Well. Well, you know, we could do. I could get. I could get shirts made for Sue and Jessica that were the same as what we had. Because last year. Yeah. What was that? I don't remember. I choose Richmond. I choose Richmond. I choose Richmond. Yeah, did Brock Brian do? We got them. Yeah. We should get a new one. We should get a new one. I don't remember getting that one first. First of all, I didn't want to bring that. It's the same as this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. and I did. Oh, okay. Oh, we'll talk about it. We'll we'll figure out something so we're all set. Get your brain ready, people. Okay. <laughs> That's true. It's a shorter brain. Than you know, so. It is. It is. It's on the very street. Oh, okay. What? It's on the street. Oh, street. Um, exactly. Wow. All, all those people, people that. Well, all those people that. Yeah. It's yeah and then the certain ones will carry on to Kmart but it's officially ending in Mary this year they said get the word out so I'm doing my oh, part there it is where are all those people that are part right. wow. Wow. Huh. interesting hey, uh, You're welcome for that change <laughs> thank you for that tip Sarah okay next is our action item on August 27th, our next board meeting day, that is Blue Devil Night here at the high school. So like we did last year, we need to move our meeting. We're going to have it at Lee School. So per our policy and all of that, we have to do um, a motion to move our meeting site. So if someone would like to do that. My motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to change the meeting location for the August 27th. 2018 Board of Education meeting from the Media Center at Richmond High School to the Media Center at Will L. Lee Elementary School. Okay, it has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That is it. We are adjourned at 734.